Hey everybody, Preston Poulter here with Pocket Jacks Comics, and I want to do a follow-up on Aliens Resistance. Not only follow-up, a new video on issues two and three. So I did a prior review of issue one, so you can find that. And amongst my videos, I'll put a link down in the description for you. Uh, but this features Amanda Ripley of Alien Isolation fame, and she is teaming up with Zula Hendricks of the prior comic book, Aliens Defiance. Pretty good. Uh, I, 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 I was into Aliens Defiance. Uh, I was kind of disappointed with how it ended, only because I'm like, what, what that's it? There, there needs to be more story. But, you know, there is more story. They were just saving for Aliens Resistance, and here it is. So, um, issue two picks up immediately after issue one. Uh, it features, okay, so now we know that Weyla Yutani has this off, you know, this off in the remote planet. Uh, there, there is a, a special world where they've got a, a weapons testing facility where they're going to be testing the alien out on some innocent colonists kind of thing. And they're, they're out to stop it. And all right, so they're, they're sneaking on board the ship where, where the colonists are being taken. And, you know, we, we have colonists being beaten up by an android. The, the android ma makes a comment here. All right, so they're, they're knocking them out with knockout gas. And there's this one colonist who, who won't breathe, and the android punches him. Uh, so that, you know, he knocks the wind out of him, now he has to breathe, and is like, you're going to be part of something beautiful. I'm like, why would an android say that? I don't, I, all right, um, I mean, maybe, I, I guess we're kind of invoking Ash. Uh, but these are kind of like the, they're promoted or put forward as kind of the, the Siegson-style androids from Alien Isolation, uh, you know, uh, which were not big conversationalists. You know, they just kind of had scripted things if you always know a working Joe kind of thing. Uh, so, uh, seems a little tall. You know, maybe they're trying to indicate upgrades, but, I don't know. The, the, that comment seemed a bit off. Um, the the combat in issue two, I, I kind of take some issue with. Uh, there's, all right, so they, they've clearly got guns, and they're, they're sneaking along the ship, and they've got guns, and then they enter a hallway, and then there's a bad guy, android, and they tackle him. And then <laughs> tackling the android goes about as well as you would expect tackling an android to go. <laughs> He's just, he punches her <laughs> right in the visor, which, which gets a crack they have to tape up later. And then Zula remembers, oh, wait, I have a gun. I guess I'll shoot him. Like, why did, why, why wasn't that your go-to beginning? <laughs> why did tackling ever enter the picture? In inquiring minds want to know. So, uh, they they kind of get wind that Weyland Yutani is going to do the, the weapons tests and then nuke, nuke the entire site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Only way to be sure. So, they decide, okay, we're going to steal the nuke. And so they, they sneak to this other part of the ship and they steal the nuke and then they go up on the surface of the ship and here come a whole bunch of androids and they get in this firefight, and here's where I'm like, okay, really? Um, because Zula gets hit, not bad hit, despite the fact she's in a pressure suit in outer space. It's not a bad hit. I mean, you would think like any hit would be a bad hit when you're in a pressure suit in outer space. But all right, not a bad hit, but bad enough to knock her off the ship. So now she's floating out there in space with the nuke, which is now kind of floating away from her. And then Amanda's like, hold on. And so she, she disengages and jumps to, to save Zula. And the androids are still on board the ship, like, shooting at her. I'm like, that has to be the easiest target on the planet. Like, they, once you're in, just, you know, you're out there in space, you can't alter your direction or course or anything. It's just constant speed and trajectory. Like, that, that's got to be the easiest shot to make. Of course, the you know they went to Stormtrooper Academy. They they, they can never hit anything. So, but uh, uh, I, I, I've got some issues there. Like, come on, Stormtrooper Academy. Do like it, it? It's one thing that that the bad guys can't hit. It's another thing when the good guys act like the bad guys will never hit. When they're just taking crazy risks. Like, who cares? Bad guys can't ever hit us anyway. So, but that is where we leave off issue two. They are they are floating in space. Um, the android from Aliens Defiance. Uh, is is now on board the nuke somehow. I can't explain how. I reread that section of the comic. 
I, I lost I lost track of how many times I reread that section of the comic trying to understand how the uh, you know how how the good guy android so Davis the good guy android who helped the uh, who helped Zula and was kind of her her companion in Aliens Defiance has been reduced to just this you know he he's kind of playing Jarvis from Iron Man he's just this kind of disembodied voice and computer process in the background and he somehow got on the nuke I don't know how he got on the nuke. I reread that section of the comic three times, four, four times. times. I, I, I lost, I lost track of how many times I reread that section of the comic. Somehow it got on the nuke. We just supposed to accept it. Okay, fine. So <laughs> at the end of issue two, everyone is literally floating in space. Zulu's floating in space. Amanda's floating in space, and Davis in the nuke. They're all just lost in space. So, uh, pretty good cliffhanger ending. Not bad. I want to check that out. And then we pick it right back up in issue three. So in issue three, all right, they're floating in space, but here comes the Gaspar, that that colonist ship, which is going to be making its way down to the planet. And fortunately for them, it happens to be in their path. So they are able to climb on to the outside of the Gaspar. It just got lucky uh, that they were able to get on on, on board the ship. And then a ship enters orbit with them on the outside of it. They're able to erect this sci-fi cocoon that that keeps them safe as they they re-enter the atmosphere. And now they're on Jungle World! And you definitely get some Predator vibes in Jungle World. And, you know, I gotta say, Predator would be interesting if instead of the Predator alien, it was the alien alien. And and so, you know, you definitely get to see that here, which is kind of neat. And there's, like, the moving through the grass thing... Like, I'm feeling a little Jurassic Parky. Oh, but it's an alien. Oh, but we shot him. And then, down there on the planet, we, we meet the, the Seekson-style androids are now bulletproof. Dun-dun-dun! All right, fair enough. But they also don't seem to give a darn that there are intruders. Okay, so, just want to point out, right? The Seeks and androids are on board this top-secret weapons facility in issue three... And they're like, oh, wow, there are people who clearly shouldn't be here. They're shooting at me. Oh, well, I don't care. I'm bulletproof. I'm going to ignore them. Because it's like put in their hard code. They're androids or something. But these are the same androids that were making cute comments about you're going to be part of something beautiful in issue two. feel like there's kind of a lack of consistency there. I want my androids to be kind of the same. Because they're androids. But whatever. Um, Really nice artwork in terms of you know, so some some of the gruesome bodies, uh, but we got aliens that get vaporized, neat, and then they get in touch with Davis, who's still up there in space on the nuke, but the nuke is now on the ship, I believe, that's, what, that's where it seems to be, and Davis is saying, okay, you two, you gotta clean stuff up down there, because I'm gonna blow up this nuke and blow up this planet, and so you gotta get a tracker because Davis kind of reveals in this moment of exposition, oh, by the way, the colonists have been implanted with tracker devices so that the aliens can find them, I'm, I'm guessing, or something, or maybe the androids can find them. Anyway, they got, they got tracker devices on them, and so the plan becomes if you recover a tracker from one of the colonists, then you can prove that Waylon Yutani was running this illegal weapons facility, and then, well, you will cook their goose once and for all. And so that, that becomes the plan before I blow up my nuke that I am in. Um, And that's where we leave issue three. All in all, not a bad story. I'm I'm digging it. Uh, I recommend you check it out. By the way, I got a Kickstarter coming up for White Lily issue two that launches on May the 9th. There will be a link down in the description. I hope you will join me. Take care.